brothers for now We fall apart at the seams Do you remember when we would scream now? I'm sitting here with broken dreams It wasn't a third day We're buried in my way You're not allowed to mix the sun in Fall apart at the seams Do you remember when we killed for each other But now I could have had you here with me It wasn't a fuzzy Buried in my way You're not alone It makes the sunny morning feel so Things I'll have to say at another time So long, farewell, goodbye Things I'll have to say at another time And welcome to episode four of Guitar Tales. We've made it to four and there's many, many more to come. My name is Dave Cohen. I'm thrilled that we're in episode four. And one of the things that I get to watch is I get to watch our great guests speak and sing before we go on the air. We have Dim from Hana Lee. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but I want to take this opportunity to again thank some important people in this uh, production. First of all, Riverview Studios, fantastic. The studio, you can't see it. I'm gonna to point to something that the camera won't even pick up. It's okay. Um, these studios are beautiful. We sit on the banks of the Delaware River. The interior is eclectic, it's beautiful, it's large, it's modern, it's solid state, it's HD. Um, if you ever have any film, you need to come here. Look at this, uh, the website, riverviewstudios.com. It's wonderful. Uh, I wanna thank Scott, guitar assist Engel. He's been promoting tonight's show, I just told you. Yeah. Um, you're not even on camera yet, but you're answering me, which is perfect. Um, we are very lucky uh, tonight to have with us uh, Dim from Hana Lee. What I love about tonight's episode, for guitar players you might not have heard of, but you should have and you will, um, are people who have stories, guitar players who have stories. And my favorite thing about tonight's episode is that short of about a half hour, 40 minutes ago, we had never met. Yeah. 
Uh, I already like the guy. I know he's a great guitar player. I know he's a great songwriter. I know he's a great singer because I've heard him sing and I've heard him play and I learned that there are songs. So welcome aboard tonight. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm thrilled much. to have you. Uh, yeah, I'm thrilled to be here. Everybody's, uh, everybody's been very kind and thank you for having me on the stage. Absolutely. Yeah. Man. You know, you did a great job. Um, so I loved your songs. You played two songs. The first song, I don't want to get the name wrong, is, let me look at my notes here. This is taking too long. It is so long. Mm -hmm. Funny, I said it took me too long to find the song. So long. So long. Yeah. Um, the song we'll hear about later is Mill Hill Saloon. I've spent many a day, not many a night there, because when I go to court in Trenton, yeah. I would frequently end up at Joe's Mill Hill just to have a non-alcoholic lunch. But it is also a night spot. And it I is. Guess you're a Trenton-based musician. Yeah, the the Mill Hill basement is like our CBGBs. Really? Yeah, it's uh, it's our um, it's our our home, our go-to spot, and uh, for. Uh, past how many years we've always had touring bands come through and they end up loving the spot and subsequently uh, there's another bar called Championships Bar and Grill which holds oh champs yeah champs I know champs in and the Berg right yep in the Berg I know, and I they're, know they're, they're going strong throwing some I... great shows and then we throw some good shows as well and it ends up there, there ends up being a Pretty thriving art and music scene at the moment. There is. Uh, I actually uh, know the former owner of Champs. Oh yeah. From about 25 years ago. Oh wow. I don't know if it's the same owner. I don't want to say the name, but okay. Uh, I've, they have great food there. I didn't know it was a music venue now. It's been for uh, a number of years. Uh, the uh, the uh, bands such as Molly Rhythm, well, uh, okay. they uh, they uh, they live there and they work there and they throw some killer shows, some killer art galleries that happen on first Fridays of the month. Okay. And uh, they're, they're very active in the community as well, and a very good band. Well, that's You know, fantastic. so one of my favorites. There's What's a, the name of the band? There's a band called Molly Rhythm. Okay. So that's more of uh, the Championships Bar and Grill venue, but they'll right. come play Mill Hill and we'll go play Champs, and both the venues together create a, a, a small but intense art and music scene that's still bubbling, still growing. It's been there for years. Uh, I uh -huh. told you before we taped tonight uh, that my law school band, uh, basically our bass player who took up guitar when I couldn't handle the priest because he's that good and I'm not that good. Okay. Uh, Tim Boney comes from the Trenton musical scene uh, from years ago. Um, so what I'm going to do is segue real quickly right now because we have a game to play. Okay. All right. I'm in. And then we're going to talk uh, about you and about your music, about the two really beautiful guitars you both. I love the beat up guitar here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so six degrees of John Bon Jovi. Okay. So here's the game. All right. Everyone on the planet Earth probably is within six degrees of this gentleman. Uh, and certainly in Jersey, you could probably get there in a few steps. Now, okay. I know you don't have a two-step way to get there. We talked about it, but how do you get there? We, uh, you can take multiple paths, by the way. Okay. Right. Uh, we play Asbury Park in Honolulu. Okay. Uh, in Alpha Rabbit. And uh, the band I tour with, Doc Rotten, plays Asbury Park with some for, with, with regularity. Right, right, right. Uh, and there is another thriving scene out that way that incorporates into the Trenton scene. And they all, we all kind of work together. And uh, venues like the Yacht Club or uh, okay. the Saint, uh, okay. Asbury Lanes some years ago, and also the Stone Pony. So, all right, so we talked at length. I know you watched episode one with Scott Engels. Scott I did. Guitarmacist. Guitarmacist, yes. Yes. So you played the Stone Pony. I have in past. Okay. Yes. Now I actually not recently though. No. Yeah. No, I I know Bruce has played there a billion times. Has, has John Bon Jovi true. played there? He must have, right? I, I you know, I'm not sure. Okay. I, I might defer to you on another path. Okay, let me hear it. For uh, guitar assist, okay. his father was uh, was good friends with uh, Tico Torres's mentor. Or he was Tico Torres's mentor. Ooh. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna go. So that's so you'll take the Dave two, route. Dave I'll to take Scott. Dave to Scott. To Dad. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Dave, Scott, Dad, John. There right, you so go. You get there in four steps. That's not bad. All right. So I got okay. four. And then you got some street cred because you're playing in the Stone Pony, mm -hmm. which is where Bruce has played, and really Bruce is the one who made it famous. Whether John Bon Jovi has played there or whether you go through Bruce probably knowing the guy, you can get there that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that'll work. All right. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So I have also a Wonder Bar too. Oh, they, okay, they play great. there. I'm sure they I play there a lot more frequently than okay. I've played the Stimpony. Stimpony is only occasional at best. Right. So. Now I know because I did a little bit of research going in. You are literally someone who's toured the planet, right? <laughs> 
Yeah. So let's talk about countries other than the United States you've played in. Sure, okay. sure. Uh, in England, you know, you know, there are right. some visa issues. But, um, oh, really? I just got off a tour in September with, uh, with Doc Rotten, who is also a Trenton-based band. Okay. But they, I mean, they, they travel everywhere. They were kind enough to ask me to, to help them out and okay. fill in on tour uh, with, in Japan. That's cool. So we did a, I, did, oh, I, th I think I did 17 shows in a row. Really? Yeah, and lived in Tokyo with those guys. That's and fantastic. I came home and my cheeks hurt and my stomach hurt from laughing and smiling. It was, it was a very cool experience. So that's amazing. So here's what I don't get. Okay. And, and my guess is most people watching this don't get, all right? Okay. So if you're, to use his name again, John Bon Jovi, right? Um, if you're anyone whom all the people listening to us have heard of, I get it. The, the people watching get it. You'll, you'll get an invite to, to play in, in, um, in England. You're gonna get an invite to play in. Cheap trick, you're, you're wearing a pin, we have to talk about I got this in Japan, too. Did you really? Yeah, I got my drummer in Hanalea, Twisted Sister one as well, because that was one Very of his cool. favorite bands. So now, Cheap Trick makes yes. Budokan famous, right? Uh. A billion years ago, right, right. Um, okay. But how does some, you're not famous. You're really good, I'm we've not. watched you play. No. But how does someone who's- or famous sort of, for the right reasons, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> but, you're, you're every bit as good as the people are famous, but you're not okay. someone, you know, whom everyone has heard of. I keep saying whom, but um, how does that occur? How do, how do bands who are really good, who have wonderful original music, get invited to other countries to play? Uh, just playing, playing really? live, playing in bands, playing with other bands. Okay. Uh, I, I tour as much as I can. That's, so, uh, you know. Listen to that sentence. And I, I score. How great is that? I do. I, yeah. I, I wish it could be, you know, I, I wish that could pay the bills one day, but okay. until then. But y you meet people along the way, and you never know who you're going to meet. You never know who's right. going to watch you. So, what's the demand? So, let's say, so you have played in England, right? Uh, I was, uh, almost. Uh, almost. you were rejected because uh, you had something in your bag. Like I've been there a couple of times uh, okay. for, for a couple of festivals and All unfortunately, right. yeah, when it was time to play, I, I, my, my visa uh, circumstances weren't in order. I understand. So. That happened to, I think, Paul McCartney. And, and yeah. Ago. All right. Yeah. So let's talk about Japan. Okay? okay. So you live in, not you, but one lives in Japan. What attracts them to see this band? How do they hear about you? How do they learn about you? Why do they go to the venue you're playing at? It takes a village. Okay. You know, there, there are tour managers involved. There are booking agents involved. There has to be some, somewhat of, a, of an interest. Okay. Uh, however, at the same time, as a DIY band such as themselves at this moment, Doc right. Rotten, and they'll, they'll break through. I, I, That's interesting. I'll, I'll put my money on it. They'll, uh, but, you know, you have to go and still play the clubs. That's, yes. and, and that's what I'm forgetting in all candor. So the first okay. three guests we had on are folks in their mid-50s. You're 34, right? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you told me that, so uh. I'm not that smart. <laughs> but um, so you actually have the potential to, to, quote, make it, air quotes, or literal air quotes. Like, what, what has made it? That's a great question. All right. uh, for me, I feel like I already made it. You know I'm, I, uh, I get to have friends that are creative and talented. I get to handle my responsibilities and, and go do what I love and an, an awesome support structure around me to, to, to do that as long as I can, you know, hold up my end of the bargain. You, you know what's great? So. I'm 20 years older than you and you just, in a wonderful way, corrected my course. You're right, you have made it. Yeah. I mean, you really yeah. have. Because I'm listening to your music. And, and again, so right now the way this show is structured, the folks watching at this point in the show will have heard one song and soon they're going to be here another. All right. You're creating beautiful music. Thank you. I, and I mean that. Like, it, it's really good. Um, I'm digging it. I hope they do. Uh, yeah. they, they can't not. Um, and you've got people listening, people enjoying. And mm -hmm. you're right. What, making it because you want to be in line with the Kardashians who gives a shit, right? No. That's no, what I mean. Like, I really don't. And, and you're saying you don't give a shit because I you're... Do, I, mean, I, yeah. I, I don't, I'm not going to be, you know, completely self-righteous and go, oh, I would, I'm not in it for the money. Right. To be able to pay a mortgage or provide for your family with doing what you, what you love, is, that's the American dream. Right, right, you know, right. To be able to, to come to this country and do what you love and yeah, be able to provide for your family, right, right, right. And no matter where you're from, you yeah. know, uh, that's the dream. The I feel like 
so much of that. And that's not, just not in recent time, that's, that's of all time. Right. You know, people get greedy and they want you know, the Kardashian money, or they yeah. want the, you know, 10 years ago it was the Paris Hilton fame, yeah. or 10 years before that it was you know, the Survivor fame or anything like that. Um, but you I, have the artistic piece of it already. Yes. You know, it's funny, I, w I had my kids in LA about five years ago, four years ago, something like okay. that, we're on vacation, and they begged me to take them to Nobu. Oh, wow. In Malibu, yeah. The broke, famous place. Yeah, yeah, it broke the bank. So <laughs> we're moving our table from too, too sunny, too hot to the shade. Okay. I get there first. They're sort of getting ready. And they're, they're, they're I guess, 11 and 13 at the time. Okay. I'm sitting at a table, and I'm looking this way. And I see this table full of people. I instantly hate them. I instantly look at them and think they're entitled jerks who don't appreciate the quality of the food they're about to eat. They don't appreciate where they are. I've, I've developed all these judgmental opinions about these people. Okay. And I can't, I, I feel all this negative energy coming from the table. My kids sit down and like, oh my God, dad, that's the Kardashians. <laughs> and it was them. So all my instincts were right. Well, also, I mean, there would yeah. be the flip side of, of making it too is yeah. I can't go to the Mill Hill Saloon because, you know, if you're a Kardashian famous or, or whatever that level of fame is that right. we've become so obsessed with, it becomes a gilded cage too. I can't go out to the grocery store. I can't, you know, there's a fine balance. Uh, so honestly, I mean, if I'm here right now, I, th I think I've done all right so far. Yeah. Knock on wood. You yeah. Know. Now, the other thing is that if you look at our heroes, Cheap Trick, I think Cheap Trick stopped when they should have stopped, so they, maybe they don't count. Um, but let's say eight years from now, you become uber famous. Okay. Do you think your songwriting and art will suffer? No. How come? Or, or what, better yet, let's make it positive. How and why do you think you can sort of be creative when maybe, let's say financially, life becomes easy and some of the stresses in life diminish? Personally, I don't write a song going, sitting down at a table going, I am now going to write a song. Okay, all right. Uh, I, it's almost putting up an antenna and catching whatever it is. So if I were to be you know, that level in eight years, I'd still be sitting down at my table, okay. putting up the antenna, and seeing what, see what comes happens. out. Now, if it's happy or positive or whoever, that's all subjective. I mean, that, that, would, yeah, that, that would be more of the audience, how they, they perceive right. it. And yeah. you're right. Like, I'm thinking, you made me think of Pete Townsend, a guitar yeah. and pen, right? Yep. So here he is. He's very successful. He's filling arenas. This is, um, he probably wrote it. The song comes out in, what, 78, 79. So let's say he wrote it in 77. He's at the peak of his fame. Okay. So he's sitting at the kitchen table that's metaphorically the same as yours. All right. thinking, oh, wow, everything I write has already been done. How, how does the creative process work? Ooh. And he writes a song based on the creative process. So yes, he's rich, but he's still writing about something relatable. Yeah, at the end of the day, if, as long as you're true to that process, you're going to adapt to whatever situation it is, be it happy or sad or, or angry right. or indifferent. Right, and you're still going to have relationships that succeed and yes. fail and fall in the middle and things like that. I, I believe when Queen was first taking off, they got ripped off by a manager and, and uh, Freddie and company wrote uh, Death on Two Legs. Oh, really? So you can still yeah. make it and still have the, the, the trials and tribulations. It might just be in another emotional space that the circumstances right. right now don't necessarily apply to. Now, what's your, so what's your process? So we had Nixon's head on last week, who were fabulous, oh, by the way. Yeah. They were great. That's cool. And, and, and we learned that Jim Slade writes most of the, the songs with the music. Okay. He's sitting here, and then Andy's sitting here, and, and they agreed. But then Andy did what they called, and I think objectively could be called the arrangements. And there was this mm. whole discussion. I picked up on it with you, by the way, um, in your first song, So Long. I don't know. Actually, I didn't have to look. There was, there, you did something similar to what they did. There was sort of a pause in, in some of your chord playing that I think took a moderately simple, wasn't that simple a chord progression, but a moderately simple chord progression, you okay. added interest to it. Do you write alone or do you write with other people? Both. Okay. Both. Um, I'll put in, uh, for example, So Long. Uh, right. We do with Alpha Rabbit. Okay. However, Alpha the, Rabbit is Alpha the Rabbit. Uh, okay. So that band consists of three complete songwriters okay. and sometimes we'll come with a song or sometimes we'll come with a riff sometimes somebody will come with a melody or we'll just get together and it'll be complete grassroots organic so you and might build literally it from the top up yeah let's go to the studio or let's go to your house and we're gonna let's write a song or you're just hanging out and you're just tinkering around and the song exits that conversation yes or okay. one of us could bring a song that's completely different when we introduce it mm-hmm 
Pardon me, I'm sorry. Nothing happened. Whatever you thought happened, I didn't see. Uh, I'm on mic. Uh, Anyway, um, we... I could bring so long to sound like that and electric, it doesn't sound like that because the other two stamp is on it right. and vice versa. So it's almost a three-headed monster sort of approach with That's that band. Cool. With yeah. Hana Lee, it, it's been, uh, you know, t- my, my singer, Tim Ho, okay. he, is, uh, he is primarily the songwriter, okay. but he's not the whole songwriter. Okay. Uh, Mill Hill Saloon, I actually wrote for the new record. Now, I... Speaking of that, you played it on acoustic. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. It'll be a little. Actually, let's put it on the tape now. Let's put it on the tape now. Cheers. We were, we were, yeah, we were looking for. Yeah. All, right. All right. Hold on. Cheers. Cheers. I get one. You get water. Thank you. So that's. We were thinking of an organic place to put it. Um, I love that song, and a um, couple of things about it. First, I get the sense that it plays really nicely electric too. Yes. Is it was it written for electric performance or was it written for acoustic? It was a written. Or neither. Both. Okay. Um, I, I, I've been, the more bands that I'm playing in, the more utilitarian I get with songwriting. Okay. Right. Now, one, another thing I noticed with that is I watched you setting up. There was a difficult suspended oh. in there, right? The D suspended. Yeah. yeah. And I was watching it, and you hit it every time. That's a Pete There's, Townsend. That's actually a Pete Townsend move. There, you were doing a little <laughs> bit of Tommy in there, too. A little bit. And I uh, liked it Not a lot. too much. I didn't want to rip anybody off. No, but at the same but time, um, there are nice touches to what he does. You know, you, you've always got the... That's the one right there. But he also hits a D. You know, you can hit D and do three. You can right. power chord. You can go up there. But he... You were hitting nice suspenders mm-hmm. in Millhouse Saloon. And yeah. then you hit the high note instead. Watch. Is it is it hard to do? Because I watched you were setting up before you hit the suspension. When I first started learning that chord, it was incredibly hard. It uh, looked hard, yeah. But now it's just look out to the crowd. Yeah, because if you look at the space, like that's... Yeah, and sometimes you can hit that open string. Right. And then go up. Right, yeah. So it's funny, uh, last th- the last recording we had, Jim Slade ended a song like he did. He's like, oh, yeah. what are those? Well, it, it adds a little... Uh, Genesis nice. Quoi to it, you know. Yeah, it's mm. nice though. Yeah, yeah. Instead of like, right, right. Yeah, you watch for your drummer who's not sitting next to you because there's no drummer. Here. <laughs> I don't have a band to hide behind. You're no, right. No, but that that, but I noticed that that song seemed like it, it was great on acoustic, but it looked like Thank it would you. play really nicely on. on um, a it has, and uh, for the upcoming Hanalee record yeah. uh, that we just recorded at SRG Studios here here around uh, Hamilton and Mercerville. Okay. There was, a, you know, that's an electric version. Okay. That, yeah. Now, the Hana Lee, um, I told you in our pre-interview, yeah. in our little, little pre-interview, um, that name sort of rung a bell for me. I'll, I'll just ask you and we'll see if it's the connection I think it is. Where did you guys come up with that name? All right. Well, I'm going to break your heart. I didn't. Okay. But who I did? Didn't. Or do uh, you know? The band did. Okay. Uh, as time goes on and technology gets smarter and more advanced, Coming up with a band name that hasn't already been picked or patented is right. uh, is a little difficult. Oh, it's hard, yeah. So they, it lo- you know, uh, I'm forgetting which band member did it, but ba- and based on pre- previous interviews that we've all been a part of, I think Tim or Tony wrote it on a, a paper plate. They right. liked the way it looked, they liked the way it sounded, and then they did the search engine test. And and nothing came up. Look, you want to hear something fun? So in the land of Hanalee, Puff the Magic yeah. Dragon. Well, that's the connection I was hoping okay. we'd find. Okay. <laughs> Uh, my first dog, when I was, oh my God, um, two or three, mm-hmm. was named Puff. He was named Puff after Puff the Magic Dragon. Yep. From the land of Hanalei. From the land of Hanalei. So, be, because... We named our van Puff the Magic Wagon. Did you really? Uh, the van of Hanalei. Oh, I love you know, that. I've spent, lo- yeah, you know, when I talk about it, sometimes I'll say, you know, I've spent, you know, so-and-so plus years in the land of Hanalei. Now, now, do you know uh, the band? Which one, Peter, Paul, and Mary? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So when I was a little kid, you would, you may or may not know this, they had a, 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 an album called Peter, Paul, and Mommy, which no. was a kid's album. Wow. So I grew up with the album Peter, Paul, and Mommy. Okay. So as I was looking at, you know, you sent me an email giving me a little bit of your history, mm-hmm. and I thought, you know, Hannah Lee, Hona, like, and I'm thinking of all these we different get that a lot. Right. Yeah, we do get that a and lot. And then suddenly it clicked with me. I'm like, oh my God, Hannah Lee, that's got to be the connection. Yep. And I made it a point not to specifically 
ask you before we started, so the universe put this show together because my first dog was named Puff. Somewhere in the cosmos. Yeah, somewhere in the yeah, cosmos. Yeah. So I want to talk about your guitar now a little sure, bit. Sure, man. So I love this guitar. You, this is the second Martin on Guitar Tales, but it's very different from our first Martin. Uh, Big Daddy Abel had the first one. Um, that actually inspired me to bring this one. I, I saw it and went, oh, well, I can you know, choose from both fields. It's a cool guitar, and the thing that I picked up on that thankfully I was right about, that's a graphite guitar. It is. This is courtesy of Russo Music. Really? Yeah, in Hamilton, New Jersey. Those, those guys are, that's a great guitar store. It's a wonderful guitar store, and yeah. that's a wonderful guitar. It's got great tone. And one of the things I liked about it, you let me play it a little bit before yeah. we went on. And, and well, it sounded good, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank no you. problem. Um, it sounded great acoustically, okay. uh, but I didn't play it through the amp when you did the, the, the number. As the, we number. the number. The tune. Right, the tune. <laughs> um, it, it, it really, it, through the amp, whatever kind of pickup is in there, it sounded really nice through the amp. Thank you. I think it's a Fishman. Uh, okay. It's... it's <laughs> See, I don't know any... As professional as I am. You can Hold give on. me a, a million names for um, pickups for electrics. I don't know anything about acoustic pickups. So pick, okay. Fishman's a name I don't know. I think it's a Fishman. Uh, you know, guys at Russo's, please forgive me if I'm wrong. I do believe it's a Fishman and electronic. But, um, yeah, this is a... Uh, it, it sounds great. I prefer out of an amplifier as opposed to if I'm, oh, play, really? if I'm playing acoustic. Right. Because uh, there's so many, so many different... PAs, or they're oh, all, it's yeah. all a crapshoot, and you, you know, and you sometimes you can't get them from a line check. Sometimes you need to really get a sound, and then, and that's an empty space, right. whether it's a basement or a stage. And it, the next thing you know, there's if there's people, mm -hmm. both there's people, but right. you know, that fills up and affects too. So having an amp that you can control within your grasp, as opposed to going, yeah. excuse me, Mr. Soundman, may I have more in my monitor? You right, know, and that, then that's the other thing, is that that's a guitar that's going to feed back much more than that, because the is. body is going to feed back. It is, yes. But so do you play live with acoustic as much as electric? or? I have. Uh, the story behind this was that Mrs. Claus was very, very kind to me one year. And who, and who was behind Mrs. Claus? That would be my lovely lady, Jess. Oh, very mm -hmm. nice. Her and her family nice. chipped in because I was gigging with an acoustic uh, over a course of some time and opening up. Just solo acoustic for right. different bands and in different right. settings. And one of them was, uh, you know, I had a gig where I was playing outside for four hours at a time. Okay. Up in New Hope. At okay. The, at the Bucks County. Uh, and I'd done Jonas. that. No, uh, Bucks County Playhouse. Oh, I know where that yeah. is. Yeah. So they would, they, would hold show, they would hold things in the courtyard, and I right. would play for four hours. I got my chops up on it. But, however, I was using a cheaper guitar, one right. that wasn't really projecting well. Yeah, that projects nice. And uh, yeah. holding it in the... Um, <laughs> I would use a garbage bag to, to carry this. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, I don't know whether it was pity or whether it was you know support or maybe a combination of both. Yeah. Uh, her lovely family and her, they all chipped in, and uh, the, the the guys and the, you know ladies and gentlemen at Russo's you know were kind enough to uh, to bestow this upon me. Now that, that I, I've you know I'm not as big in acoustic as electric, but I've never seen a graphite. Acoustic. Uh, they exist, but I've never had one up close. No. Yeah, it's really. It's. Yeah. You know, you look at it right away, and I think, wait, I don't see any wood grain. Oh my God, is that a graphite? Yeah. And, and it projects wonderfully. It, it plays really nicely. Projects nicely. It feels great too. And uh, shout out to Matt Bernard and Jim Graziano at uh, okay. at Russo's because they, you know, they helped me acquire this, and they they also do a wonderful job setting it up. Well, that's the thing. You have you have a fresh set of strings on there, so like, yeah. There's something about a fresh, not immediate, because then they're stretching too much. It's like, your, fa it's like your favorite jeans right out of the washer. Yes. Yeah. That's a, that's Feels a good. good. Yeah. yeah. You know, let's, let me, hey, let's man. take a look. Yeah. You've got nice machine head. I always like to do this. So you got, here we go. You got nice machine head. Are they Shallers? No. No, they're Martins. All oh, right, they probably do their own stuff. So you got nice wood grain on the neck here. Oh, that neck is wonderful. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Feels great. Feel, yeah. you know. There you go. Yeah. It play, I, mean, I played it before. It plays nice. It's called the... Dacalax, I can't even pronounce, D-X-A-E, black. There's got to be a pronunciation of that. But it, it, it's a beautiful guitar. Yeah. And it's real simple, too. It is. It's no, fr it's no frills. Uh, yeah. And some black, like I like them. Yeah, and here's the weird thing about Martins. <laughs> I, like, I like my guitars and my clothes. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, that doesn't or, count. Or, yeah. <laughs> but they, don't ha they never have really tight action. Like that's not the Martin thing. No, no, they're they're a little. It's a little higher up on the profile, but yeah. this one is admittedly a, a little a closer to lower. the fretboard. Yeah, yeah. It, it's certainly lower, but it's um, like why I never took to Martin besides the price tag, 
was, right. uh, they're harder to play. Well, actually, this version is a little bit it's uh, easier friend than a typical Martin. Well, it's also friendlier on the wallet too. So, oh, is it? yeah, if anybody you know can't you know, you can think of a Martin just like you can think of a Gibson, uh, right. you know, and think, oh, that's three thousand out the window, or some oh, models. Oh, that's not. It's not like a three thousand. I don't. I don't really know how much it was. I was they never. I was never gonna. Gets. They'd. Right. They'd have to kill me. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Tell me they'd have to kill me. Right. Um, but it was. Uh, it was kind enough. So. No, that, that's that's a very nice guitar. So show us that 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 difficult chord. Oh, there's oh. the pick. In case I decide to play. Um, show us that that deed. It was further up the neck that you were doing it. Oh. Oh. So. Um, From so long. And that? then you were. No, there was something else. That, yeah, but you did that further up the neck, I thought. Maybe, maybe it was the second song you were doing it. Uh, it doesn't matter, but, <laughs> but it was funny because I watched you setting up. And it's hard because you're doing it, there's cameras here, and, and you, hit all, you hit everything. It's a whole other planet. Yeah. 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 Because it's not, it's not live. I mean, it's no, live, it's but not. it's not live. It's not. It's a different type of fun. Yeah, yeah it I'm, is. Yeah. So that, that, that was a very cool song. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. It was, yeah. So that's what was that song about, So Long? I, uh, well, not to be a downer, but okay. um, I do write music, you know, and, and if you put your antenna up, like I said, right. sometimes it's not going to all be happy. And uh, right. I had a buddy pass away. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, he had some struggles, and okay. we'll just leave it at that. And um, there was a line in that song that says, it makes a sunny morning feel so cold. Oh, and Because uh, his, his service was, uh, you know... It was in March, I believe. March or early April, about a year or so ago. So this is raw for you. And uh, it was a beautiful sunny day, but it was freezing. Oh, wow. And it was just, you know, just the overall, I mean, the obvious, uh, you know, mood, but also, yeah. also you know, being freezing and just having this coldness of the service. And it was just, you know, so, yeah. ma so many different aspects of cold. But I like your, so. your, your antenna metaphor. Because yeah. Because you're, you're going to march your way through life. Yep. And you're going to find certain opportunities where you, you can find beauty or solace and in your situation. But and, you're going to meet a lot of people along the way that you have to say so long, farewell, and goodbye to. Right. Yeah, he's, yeah, he won't be the last, unfortunately. Unfortunately. You know? yeah. yeah. But it's a beautiful song, and I, and I, I yeah. truly appreciated it. Thank you. Thank yeah, you it's very really much. good. It's really good. I mean, I, had a I already saw your videos, so I, I had a good feeling about today. I want to switch gears and talk about this. I love thank this you. guitar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so this is like your classic kind of beaten up guitar. We that's, might have to power up the amp. I don't think the amp, you want to? That's up to you. Yeah, let's power it up. See how, see if you're plugged in. Oh, uh, that. You got it? Oh, all right. There we go. There we go. All right. So you have it dirty on there or you have it clean? We'll find out in a minute. All right, we're good to go. So this guitar. <laughs> This is, this is a great guitar. There we go, now it's nice and dirty. So this is a Gibson Les Paul. This is, I got this off of a, a very nice, wonderful coworker who was, um, had to get rid of some, you know, a lot of his stuff. I think this actually came from Russo's as well. I was thinking this was an 01. Uh, this was originally a backup. I think it's older. I'm gonna guess it's older, you know why? Why is that? I talked about this last, last the open machine heads. Oh, all right. I think by 01, they were, they were usually sealed. I could be wrong. I'm not that. really sure. But, um, I mean, this has had some, some work, a new bridge. Yeah. Right. Uh, the pickups are still pretty much the same. And, uh, I mean, in Alpha Rabbit, in Honolulu, I was using this mostly on the bridge. Right. You know, just. And then in Alpha Rabbit, I started uh, venturing out in different. That's a nice warm sound. Yeah. yeah. You get a little bit middle. All right, so yeah. I'm gonna this is a perfect segue. Okay. So episode one we talked about harmonics. Okay. So Scott, he did it a weird way. How do you do harmonics? What do you mean the uh or the what the Yes. Yeah, so I use the fat in my hand. I'm not particularly good at it because I don't play lead. It depends, uh, you know, where you're hitting it on your uh, on the string and, and in conjunction to closer to the bridge or the neck, you get a nice... Well, that's or, a good you know, and also depending on the string. Now, yeah. I, I, I'm not as good as the guitar assist, so mine's more <laughs> not 
palm or, or technique, but more of a, I hope this works. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great guitar though. I don't employ it too much. Now were you yeah. more lead rhythm, both? And Hana Lee, I play lead. Okay. Uh, however, it's a, it's a mixture of lead and rhythm. Okay. Yeah. I, um, Tim is more of a... And I'll do more of a... That's a lot more work. Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, obviously the leads, uh, I love to base a lot of leads, and Tim Ho's actually come up with a couple of leads uh, okay. along with us, okay. where it's more of a, he's a very melodic singer. Right, so right. So what I'll do is, instead of, you know, just... You know, I, you can get by with that alone. Like that, <laughs> like you know, you can walk into like just like a guitar shop, do that one quick lick, and walk away, and people are like, "All right, he's a good guitar player." You know, <laughs> it's usually sound check or line check. Right. Uh, but more, uh, if he sings a melody line, I'll try and start out with that, like George Benson style or uh, Peter Frampton. So you're gonna follow what he's singing uh, to a degree. Okay. You know, if if the song calls for a bit more, you know, instead. Of, Or maybe, you know. All right, but and if you're doing that the whole time, that's kind of both, uh, you gotta find a nice balance and it's also yeah. in service of the song. Right, what right. Are you, what's your bass player playing? Are you playing over them? What's your drummer doing? Right, Is it, right. do you want it to be more? And then hit in along with the drum beat or do you want to follow your singers M melody. Right. And, it, and it, if it's a singer like Tim Ho, okay. it's got some good melodies. Now, are you someone yeah. who, like, does your band try to sort of go down with we the do. dynamics when the singer goes and you go up when the singer's off? Like yeah, the, yeah, more, more about. Right. So there's some songs that are a bit more straightforward. Okay. Know. But, um, yeah, like, even like I hate my job, you know. You do yeah, I want, you just read my mind. Let me, show me how to play that. So, you know, you're starting out and you're just. I hate my job. I'm just kind of, well, it really sucks. I hate my yeah, job. That, that song was so cool that just it let was it ring. sort of like romantics-ish a little bit. That was, that was um, those guys had that song when I was first joining. And that okay. was one of the caveats of me joining Hanalee. I was like, we got to finish that song. Oh, so was it, it wasn't It was about done halfway done. They started playing it out a little bit live. And I remember, I, f I forget who it was. I think the original guitarist had this, this uh, harmonica part. Right, you know, and we right. all decided to keep keep the harmonica part. So our bass player who doesn't play harmonica was in the studio, threw a guitar amp, hitting the harmonica. Right, right, right. right. And uh, you know, just we just tightened it up from there and actually finished out the song, and it became. Well, that, that's that's a it real, it's a great yeah. video. Now, now, what was the process of getting that video done? In other words, you know, you see, you had the song. Okay. Right. Um, who did you contact? How does the process work? Because that's that's a, a professional, I think. Yeah. High end yeah. video. That was um that was Tom, Tommy Avalon okay. who was a director. Uh, he is now absolutely blowing up. Uh, he's really? do, yeah he's done a great job. Tommy Avalon is a uh, director of uh, I Am Santa Claus. He did Ghost Heads. He just did I one. Talk about that in a minute. Yeah. He's done a, and years upon years ago we all knew each other. Right. Uh, I mean the guys in the band more so than I as far as Tommy went. But he had an, uh, he was had a guy that he was working with who actually I, I believe he still does uh, work for the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, Michael okay. Lassizen in Mixed Nuts Production. Okay. And. Uh, so Tommy and Mike hit us up. They heard the song. We'd been able at the time we played it on a YSP. We were playing it on Man of Mar. We were playing it around a lot. You know, we had a lot of, you lot sing of really. It or someone else I do. It? I sing backups though. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Give me a few bars of it. Oh, okay. Even without a mic, let's just do it. I know you're up for it. <coughs> there you go. <laughs> so, uh, you know. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Gotta do it if you wanna get paid. I knew you were up for it. It's such a catchy <laughs> song. Fun. It's such a great little song. It's fun. Thank you. You know, it's got a great melody. It's got like a sort of a classic riff Tim, going on. Tim did great on that one. He yeah. really did. Yeah, he took the words, man. I think who doesn't? Like I, I was saying before, job. you make it, you do what you love. Yeah, so. yeah. It's it, it's a great song. Yeah. So you've got. 
So Hana Lee does that song? Mm hmm Okay. Now who does the, I, I want to say Ghostbusters. It's not Ghostbusters. What is it? Ghost oh, something. Ghost Heads. That's Ghost all, Heads. That is also Hana Lee. All right. So you guys scored a song for a movie? We did. We did a couple. But um, okay. the most recent one has been uh, Bill Murray Stories, which Tommy Avalon just did. And he was the one who directed Ghost Heads. We also have a video for that one. Wait, too. so Bill Murray? Bill Murray Stories, yeah. All right. So Bill Murray is in the guy from Ghostbusters. Or a different Bill Murray. Oh, Bill Murray, yeah. The, the one we know. Yeah. Okay. It was in our video, but, you know, yes. He, oh, all right. So, yeah, but um, it, was a, it was a documentary about the random Bill Murray sightings that happen in cities. Oh, really? You know, he'll just randomly show up at somebody's wedding, or he'll, he'll oh, randomly just bartend somewhere, usually around Chicago or New York or right. L.A. or something Because he like was that. a Second City guy before SNL. Yes, he was. So that was the Windy City. Right, right. Windy Apple. Right. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. But... Yeah. So that was a movie, or was it sort of a documentary kind of thing? That would be a documentary. There was a song uh, I'm, I'm picturing in my head. There were, there were six sort of, or four icons. Top left was Ghostbusters itself. What was that song? I really liked it. That was Ghost Heads. Oh, Ghost Heads. I keep saying yeah. that. Yeah. Right. So how does that song go? Oh. My apologies to the boys. Right. <laughs> Always in my head 24 7 24 7 Always in my head 24 7 24 7 Go oh, 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 says That's perfect. And I was, uh, you know. You know what I hear in that a little? I hear a well, little. Tim is a great singer when it comes to that. Oh, yeah, here. here. You, gotta like you gotta turn up the bridge pot. That guy right there. Bridge put right there. This is. Um, you want a pick? I got one. Right. But it, first of all, that's a great song. Thank you. It, it's it's catchy. It's it's got like it's not. I don't mean it in a rip off derivative kind of way, but it has that Green Day kind of vibe to it. Yeah, that's fine with me. If, if you're right. Yeah, <laughs> there's worse comparisons wow. in the world. Right. This guitar is. I love it. It's got. Uh, I, I think we're on the right camera here. Here we go. There. So you've got the worn out little areas here from the playing. It's got love. You got a little sticker, and I love how imprecise it is. You even got this bad boy going on here. <laughs> it used to be right. a sticker there, yeah. And and for a Les Paul, it's incredibly light. I it mean, is. This thing weighs nothing. I really feel like it's chambered. I'm what not. Sure. Like I'm not really sure though. Foo Fighters, you got a Foo Fighters thing back oh, here. Oh yeah. It's cool. I mean, it's a very nice guitar. One of my f uh, favorite bands. Wait, what there we go. No, it plays great. Thank you. It Sounding really good. Nicely. It plays really nicely. It's got a great sound. How's it feel? It feels great. Yeah. It's, it's got a fast neck. Now this one, you could breathe on these strings, and it would, you don't even have to touch the strings to play it. It's the I like them low. Strings. I like them yeah, low. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. yeah, it's got great action. Yeah, this is a very, very playable guitar. Thank you. I, yeah, I couple that with a, a Les Paul Custom that I also was lucky enough to grab from Russo's. And you said your other one is just as light as that. It is. It's a, it's a Les Paul Custom thin line. So it's about half. Yeah. So, but it's saw. It's a solid slab. But it's about equivalent in weight. Maybe a little. Maybe a little heavier. And I'll use that pri for a primary for Hanalei. This is more the primary guitar for Alpha Rabbit nowadays. I like it. I mean, it, it, I mean, I'll use both as yeah. in tandem, you know, because right. God forbid you break a string. Now, yeah. you told me coming in, that was your replacement for an ES-335. Yeah, which I still have. Right. Um, which is, a, and a, that's, I mean, that is, like, iconic. Yeah. Well, I thought I saw it because originally one is, of, is yours an Epiphone or a Gibson? Gibson. Really? I, I wanted, I saved my hard-earned bucks when I was a younger man. And right. Dude, I just, I wanted on. something, I, I started out in punk bands and I was playing these guitars that were just, they weren't staying in tune, they were yeah. just cheap, I was getting them for a song. Right, and, right, right. Uh, Metaphorically speaking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no pun intended. Right, right, right. And uh, I saw the 333 on the wall and I went, mm, well I don't want a Les Paul all of a sudden, so I started playing it. And then I just started gigging with that in my old punk bands. So, l let me ask you this, what, what is next on your personal horizon, or your professional slash personal horizon? I, uh, uh, right now, there's a tentative uh, to go back on tour with Doc Rotten and do Europe. Okay. So, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to getting in the studio with Alpha Rabbit. 
Okay, so let's talk. I want to oh. cut you off. Okay. So you've got, because I want to make sure we're clear for everyone listening. So you've got, we're going to look at the camera here. You've got three bands. You've got um, uh, Hanali. Hanali. What's the next name? Alpha Rabbit. Alpha Rabbit. And what's the next name? Uh, Doc, Doc Rotten. Doc Rotten. So Alpha Rabbit, Doc Rotten, and uh, Hanali. Three albums. How do they find you? If they want to look for you on the internet, oh, anywhere. The World Wide Web. The World Wide Web. Just yeah. put it in the search engine. They're going to be the first things that come up. Okay. Or good. at least one of the first things. I mean, okay. uh, you know, uh, Doc Rotten is available on Spotify and Apple Music. Uh, Alpha Rabbit is also available on Spotify and Apple Music. We're just right. all a click away. And same with Hanalei. All right, good. Yeah. And now they can get there through Guitar Tales because you're you're on our yeah, site. We're on Facebook. We're yeah. on Bandcamp. We're on YouTube. We're on any platform that you're uh, you want to check out. Check us out. Right, cool. Yeah, have now, some fun. What know? songs are you working on now? You have any songs that are in I do. process? I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let us hear. It was a. Uh... Talking at once, now I'm all down. Just trying to find a sound. Round and round, gotta spin me around. Save it for better days when no one's around. Just trying to find a sound. Talk to me. All I need you to do is just talk to me All I need you to do is just talk to me Baby, you can talk to me <laughs> I love this stuff. That's a cool song. That's well, a really cool song. Et cetera. It, it, it's very cool. So, <laughs> Thank you. So what's the deal with that? So that's something that's in process right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, between uh, c coming with songs to Hanalee, coming with songs to Alpha Rabbit, I tour with Doc Rotten, but I haven't had a chance to write with them at the moment. Okay. But maybe when this airs, that might be a little different. It might be yeah. a little different. Um, um, this is just one I find myself playing a lot uh, solo. Yeah. Yeah. Until, cool until it finds the right home run. If it doesn't, then that's okay. Yeah. You know? But it's it's a it's a great riff. I like the melody that came with it. And yeah, I, I tend to go for a little more blues, whereas like Tim Ho and Hanali tends to go for a little more major melodic and Alpha Rabbit, like I said, three songwriters, so it's all over the board, you know. Yeah, and you know what's funny though, you're playing so you're playing E A E A. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then I was expecting so, the E D, but you, you surprised me. You didn't do that. Uh, no, 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 no. And I was because I was sort of hearing that, and I love that you took a little left turn on us there. Yeah, I, I try, and because sometimes that's conventional. It's not bad, but it's conventional to do the E D at the. It end. is conventional, but also there's a line between serving the song and serving ego, right. and then you go, oh well, everybody's done it, so. Uh, how am I going to be different? And then right. the song just turns into, uh, you know, or, or if me, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a riff guy, you know, just, right. yeah. Now that's a cool little riff. Yeah, a little Reverend Horton Heat, you know, yeah. just a, yeah. But am I going to try and shoehorn that in there for sake of doing it? Right. You know, if yeah. that didn't work in the song, I wouldn't do no, it. You, it's like what mm -hmm. Scott said. I'll go back to episode one. He always services his audience. Yeah. You know, he didn't use the word service, but he said make the audience happy. And he talks about noodling, you know, like playing. Don't noodle. Thing. Yeah, right, Don't right. Don't do it. Right. He, he, we, I'll bring you into it. So we had this whole discussion about eruption, you know, because he's, he's in a cover band. Okay. Like, w even though he'll do it once in a while, why do that? Because no one cares anymore. You know, 20, 30 years ago. Oh, it was revolutionary. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like it still is. It's just in a different context. It's not going. Right. It, you, the next person's not going to be an Eddie Van Halen or a Jimi Hendrix, or yeah. they're going to be. They could be someone working in EDM. They could be somebody. What's EDM? Electronic dance music. Oh, it could be somebody working yeah. in in hip hop. It could be any. But you don't think so. That, 
I don't know. I mean, I would love to see a, a rock and roll band have that again. Hell, I'd like to be it. Well, that's the funny thing. When <laughs> so, I heard you before, so I'm listening to uh, Joe's Millhill Saloon. Or, yeah. Or is it uh, just called Millhill Saloon? Millhill Saloon. And However, I'm thinking uh, of, I'm going back because I'm old, but I'm going back to 78 when Pete Townsend said rock is dead. And I've yeah. had many people since then say that, and I'm listening to you, and I'm thinking, no, it's I not dead. I don't know, it's not dead. I've, uh, got, I've got 20 years on you, and I'm listening to you, and you're, you're a young rock guy, Okay. and you're playing rock. Do you, yeah. do you think rock is dead? Uh, no. Dying, weaker, just no. as good, no, just I think as it's vibrant? Just, I think it's just as good. It's in a different context. Like you said before about the, the level of fame. Right. That's not associated with guitar-based music at the moment, because... Because a lot right. of the, uh, I feel like I attribute it to many things, uh, you know, downloading, streaming, and things of that mm -hmm. nature. I feel like rock, and, rock has been a little slower to get over to that as opposed to some, you know, a hip hop artist that can download a, download a song on SoundCloud and get millions of, of, of hits and streams. In a week. However, though, that yeah. same hip hop artist might not fill a hall the same way that that rock band true, or yes. that country band is, or whatever right. other band, or, -based. or a DJ spinning electronic because is the gonna DJ do. has they're, a skill set that yeah, they don't have. Yeah, they're playing in front of 40,000 people. Right. Yeah, so that, wait, the definition on. of rock star I think is in a different yeah. it's in different genres and musical vernaculars at the moment and I feel like there's still hope. There's okay. nothing's hopeless. I wouldn't Right. You know, and even if it was, That's I enjoy okay it. Too. It's okay <laughs> so, too. But are there But I'm DJs, not aiming for that. Are yeah. there DJs who can fill a stadium with 40,000 people? I don't know. Absolutely. Knows. Really? Mm -hmm. Diplo, Dead Mouse, you you name it. Names I don't know. Mark Ronson, you well, know. That, I, that name I do know. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. You know. But I mean, that's always existed, you know. Yeah. And I feel like um it only will make anybody who's in a guitar paste anything. Like the definition of rock and roll band to me isn't exactly tight. I mean, you look at Vampire Weekend or you look at The Struts or you look at, you know, for better or for worse, any, uh, you know, any band like that. Right. But you still have guitar based and, right. but it, it also is maybe going to make those guitar bands that maybe uh, had a degree of complacency Make a better record. Yeah, and they have to. If step that's up gonna, their game. if that's gonna step up the yeah. Foo Fighters game, absolutely. Are Give me another wasting right. life. Are they still relevant? They are. Okay, what they about? Are, but the, I mean, you're getting older. Yeah. You can't rely on U2 and Foo Fighters or even. Right. Well, you t I love U2. Or that, even right? Kings of Leon now. But there's been a lot of mainstream right. rock that I, j I just didn't like at the time yeah. in the 2000s. So I went the the punk rock and indie way right. because I wasn't into the mainstream rock and roll bands. What about so, um, uh, Royal Blood? Have you heard of them? I've heard of Royal Blood. Yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and you have Ghost, you have St. Vincent, you have, uh, like I said before, the aforementioned Struts or Greta Van right. Fleet, who's right. not my cup of tea, but they're going to, they're obviously somebody's cup of tea right. if they're, you know, yeah. doing what but, they're doing. But you know what I love too? Like, uh, I'm 55, you're 34, right? Mm -hmm. I've got a 34 year old who sees it as wonderful to play a beaten up old Les Paul. Yeah. That gives me hope oh, yeah. that the, the guitar driven rock and roll is still. If it's, it's not, it's just gonna be in a yeah. different form, or yeah. it might be in a different format. Right. You know, it'll adapt. I think it will. Yeah. No, it's not gonna be what anybody remembers. But I mean, Eddie Van Halen wasn't exactly what's you know Jim was remembered from Jimi Hendrix. Right. And right. Jimmy wasn't really re remembered from what you know Django Reinhardt was. You know. Right. Or, uh, you go back. You, you just gotta John move Hooker forward. And yeah. John Lee or Muddy or Howland, you know, or Hubert Sumlin. You know. Or, um, Who's the first guy at the crossroad? Um, Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson, yeah. Well, even he learned from Sun House. Even he learned from Mike Zimmerman, you know, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Have you ever been to the crossroad? I've never. I've, driven I've been at many right. crossroads in my life. But yeah, right, never. but not the literal, <laughs> where the devil made the deal with him. Oh, no, I'm sure there's a hard rock cafe there now, so oh, I'm okay. I'll yeah. just, just pass on through and play a, play a show. Yeah, yeah. all right. So. <laughs> Seems like lately in 
it's getting old. Too many people all alone. I've seen her down the middle of the road. I've seen her down the middle of the road. Walking out on her own I've seen her Walking on my love Down the middle of Salo Middle of Salo With those who know, calling around now, what she owes. She walks out on the map for what she calls a friend, takes a ride back to where it began. Where it came There's a little place some of us go when we need some time. I've seen her down the middle of Solo. I've seen her down the middle of Solo. I've seen her walking out on her. Walking on my love I'll tell you what, this has been fabulous. It, yeah. On all these shows, the time flies by. We're probably, we've been chatting almost an hour, believe it or oh not. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, this has been wonderful. Um, people will find you. We have the three bands. We have Hana Lee. Mm -hmm. We have, I have a mental block. We have Alpha Rabbit. Alpha Rabbit. And Doc Rotten. And Doc. Doc Rotten. Doc Rotten. Yeah. Okay. It, it's been wonderful having you on. I hey, really appreciate thank you for having me. This Absolutely, is, man. This is, this is really is great. Cool. You played great. Your songs are great. Thank I really you, man. enjoyed it. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dave Cohen. This is Guitar Tales. We have so many more great shows lining up. We have other wonderful guitar players who are going to be on the show with us. Uh, you can find us on guitartales.com. You can find us on Facebook. Someday maybe I'll migrate to Instagram. I don't quite understand it yet, but we'll get there at some point. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. I want to put special thanks out to Scott, guitar assist Engel. He'll promote your show. Hi. Um, and, and really, most importantly, more important than even Scott, 
is riverviewstudios.com. We really appreciate all the great work you've done, the fabulous production, all the people who are doing our shows for us here. And uh, I just want to thank everyone. We really appreciate it. Have a great time. We'll see you next time on Guitar Tales. Oh, here. B. Okay. F Wait. flat. Wait, F sharp. So B. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we start with. Oh. Start with B. Go down to here. Okay. She also told me to stay away. You really never know what you you'll catch. And they go up. Just the other day I heard of soldiers falling on And Asian junk that's going around right, Read out the chords for me one more time, I want All to right. learn this again B But right, so from the very beginning Okay, here we go One A B Three, four, one, two, three, four A Two, three, four, one, two, three, four B, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, B, A, E, B, yeah, there you go. Now go to E. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Some Indonesian junk that's going around. Mommy's all right to four. Daddy's all oh. right. Just seem a little weird. Surrender. It's always my weakest thing. I couldn't oh, yeah? memorize any friggin' song. Ah, uh, you got it. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. it. It was the second hardest song we did. It's not even hard, but it's. It is. Uh, it was. And then we did, uh, you know, um, Spirit of the Radio. I do not myself, okay. but. Yeah. But when he would do the, doo -doo 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 -doo, I would shut off my volume and pretend to hammer. Yeah, I can't. And people thought I did it. It was <laughs> oh, so great. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Cool, man. This was a great show, man. Thank you. You did great. You did a very Thank good you. job. Thank you. I feel a lot better. <laughs> you, you, you should feel really good cool. because you did a great job. Thanks. Thanks for your help, guys.